Welcome to The Climb. It's a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. That's exactly what The Climb stands for. It's an acronym. It stands for Creating Leverage in the Music Business. And with that, let me introduce you to my co-host and good friend, Brent Baxter. Brent is an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Annabellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And most importantly, he helps singers and songwriters turn pro like you. Turn Pro teaches you the art, the craft, and the business of songwriting. And you can find him on songwritingpro.com or manversusrow.com if you've been out hanging out for a while. Mm-hmm. A recent brand change, but you've got them both. That's right, and I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. It's an innovative artist development company. They help you find your sound, and they help you find your audience. Not only do they develop and improve your artistry, they also grow and monetize your fan base, creating that all-important cash flow. Two beautiful words. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production, singular, no S. Hey, Johnny, how's it going? What's going on, brother? How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. Just hanging out, you know, ready to impart some wisdom, that sort of thing, if I have any. Oh, you've got a lot. I'm excited. So um, before we get started, once again, <clears throat> we just want to thank everybody. We're very grateful. Uh, the the downloads continue to climb. increase every they every single week. Climb. They're climbing. That's They're right. climbing. I, oh, see, you're see, so good. That's right. <laughs> you should you should do that for a living. You know, you're pretty good at that. <laughs> But uh, hey, do us uh, uh, help us out here. We we we're working really hard on these. We want to share this information, give you some inside look into how to improve your career and get on the right track. Leave a rating and a review on iTunes. It would mean the world to us, and it helps us reach more people. That's what we want to do. We want to reach as many people as we can. Right? So. That's right. Because the way iTunes does it, the more ratings and positive reviews you get, then they keep bumping you up in the ratings, so it's more visible. It's more discoverable. More people see us. So that's, so that's why that matters. Plus, it gives us a lot of warm fuzzies whenever we read, read <laughs> positive reviews. Uh, somebody used the does. term bromance. Uh, it's a little, <laughs> little creepy, which makes me glad we're, we're not actually in the same room doing this. Because um, I don't know what Johnny's wearing, you know, from like his waist down. And I don't that's need to know. Yeah. No one needs to know. So, and vice versa. For exactly. That, I mean, you could have a hat out. shirt on and nothing oh, else. I don't know. know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, in spite of what we've just said, yes, please leave a rating and review uh, so more people can can hear this. And it doesn't sound like we're working hard, but we actually try to work hard to bring you something valuable every week. So we'd appreciate that. That's right. Um, so uh, we're going to get into part two now of eight questions to ask before you demo that song. And in part one, just to kind of review here, we talked – uh, about the first four uh, questions that you needed to ask was, is the song finished? Number one, is it really, are you really done with it? Or, or, mm-hmm. or can, it, can the screws be tightened and, and, and to bring it up to make it more pro? Number two, is it a wide pitch? Are you reaching the biggest possible audience, uh, the biggest possible amount of artists with this, mm-hmm. right? Like, uh, can a lot of people record it? Can a lot of people record it? Yeah. Number three, is it commercially relevant? Are you... Um, are you writing in the genre that you're supposed to be right. writing in and the tone that you're supposed to be writing in with what's being played today? Right. Are the fans going to oh. care? Is this something yeah, exactly. a bunch of people want to hear? And uh, and then finally, who could sing this? Mm-hmm. Is it is it too rangy? Is it um, you know? Is it are, are you cutting people out because of you have a very specific style that maybe isn't going to translate to as many artists that's that are cutting it now because you're you're you've got to cut up you've got to write it right a, am know. i doing a real grungy southern rock country artist song but you know what there's nobody on the radio right now that does that you know that's right. an example of that going well who can sing this well it's a really grungy southern rock thing and there's you know nobody that does that right now so it doesn't matter how good it is oh well okay stick in my back pocket wait till somebody comes along and then maybe i'll demo it if it's right so there you go yeah so play play your chess play your chess pieces correct exactly you want to get the yeah. the best players on the board right you want to get your best players on the field so, so part two here let's get into the, the, the new fresh information number yes. five number five 
does the song have a fresh, speaking of which, melody and lyric? All right, so listen, you have to bring something different, okay, especially if you're a new, unknown, unproven writer, okay? Your vanilla has no chance, all right? Uh, an artist has no reason to invest in your vanilla when they can get vanilla from their friends, they can get vanilla from hit songwriters, they can write vanilla themselves, you know, they just don't don't need yours. So if if you're gonna win, you got to bring something that they don't already have, all right. And so that's a, that's a big thing. So that's a fresh melody, a fresh idea, a fresh lyric. What is gonna set your song apart from all the others getting pitched? So that's what I ask myself. Is like, man, this is, you know, great. You know, if I'm going through, yes, it's finished. It's it's a wide pitch. It's commercially relevant. Uh, who could sing this? A lot of people could sing this. So I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it anything fresh and different? No, actually, it sounds just like the last five, you know, half the record from five other artists. So it's nothing new. It's not taking their their career forward or it's, you know, they got to be inundated with these and there's nothing new. Why would they record this one? It's a retread of what they've already done, mm -hmm. you know, and most of the time, if they're going to do that, <laughs> they're not going to cut mine and they're not going to cut yours. I'm sorry. They're going to. If you're just going to give them something they already have, believe me, they got other people pitching them plenty of stuff they've already done. That they have better relationships. That they have with. better relationships. Yes. Yeah. And so they they don't need yours. You know, they're not yours is not going to. You know, if it's a tie, relationships are the, one of the tiebreakers. And if you don't have those relationships to get your vanilla cut, I'm sorry. You know, so I look at that and go, if it's not something compelling, different, when they go, yeah, that one, man, that's just that's different. That's got something cool to it then I'm not as likely to demo it, basically. Go. So, yeah, easy, number five. And number six, will I pitch it? Really? Am I really going to pitch it? So, I mean, there have been plenty of times where I'm like, yeah, I like this song. Yeah, I pitch it. Yeah. But then one thing I do is I start looking through my list of, of demos and the stuff that's in my you know pitch log and, and see what have I really been pitching and where does this song fit in my catalog of stuff that I already have demoed that I'm already playing for people. It's like, okay, well, I may say, you know, here's song A that I've been pitching and here's this new song that I'm thinking about demoing. It's like, does it beat that one? Like if you're kind of in the same lane, if they're similar, you know, it's like, well, does it really beat the one I'm already pitching? Mm -hmm. I don't like it as much. I'm probably not going to play it more than I play this one. If this one gets cut, I may demo the other one, so I have a fresh version of it. But if it's kind of occupying the same space, but it's not quite as good, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to keep on pitching the one I've already demoed and not this one. But if, the, but if it's like, you know what? I've been pitching a kind of similar vein song, but this one's better, and I'm really fired up. I'm going to start pitching this new one and not the old one. Then that's a good answer. That's an answer that makes you want to demo that song. Uh, but also, you know, you just look at – not just song by song, but you just look at your catalog and go, okay, where does this fit in? Is this one that's actually going to get into rotation where I'm actually going to play for people? If I had this pitch, if I had this demo in my hand today and still have all these other songs, am I going to take this one to Warner Brothers? Am I going to take this one to Capitol today? If I had a pitch meeting today, would I do that? And really try to be honest about that because it's easy to go, yeah, yeah, man, I'll pitch it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, look at your current catalog and what you are pitching for real. Would you really? I've got a good, I've got a good, I, you know, the best way to approach this, and I haven't heard anybody that could beat this yet, mm. but uh, the best mindset to put yourself into is, uh, is uh, Billy Joel. Well, that's a pretty jo good mindset, but yeah. It's a good, I mean, hey, everybody wants to be Billy that's, Joel, right? Like all the supermodels. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, the, what Billy Joel said to, was this. He's like, look, I'm a songwriter. My songs are my children. I love them all equally as if they were my children. And I think every writer can aspire and understand and relate to that statement right there, especially if it's a new child, mm -hmm. right? But he goes, you know, some of my children grew up to be doctors and lawyers, and some of them grew up to be delinquents. I love them <laughs> equally. But, you know, your job – is to know the difference, like right. to know which is an A song, which is a B song, mm -hmm. which is a C song. Because you know what would really stink is for you to go and spend the money, you know, that thousand bucks you've been saving up to get that killer demo, yeah. and spend it on a B song, and then tomorrow you write that A song, <laughs> <laughs> right? And you're like, oh, you know, yeah. uh, or and you really knock it out of the park. Or it's a year later and you realize I've only pitched it once, 
because it was yeah. new. And now I just, I just don't pull the trigger on it. I just yeah. don't. And if you can, it doesn't stand up to all this other stuff I wrote. I know it's because I'm pitching my other stuff because it's better or it's more on brand or it's you know more commercially relevant or wider pitches or whatever. I mean that's a bad feeling because you you know you wasted money or you wasted your publisher's money, you know, mm-hmm. and that's money you're gonna have to pay back with a song that hopefully does get cut. And so you it's your money. <laughs> yeah, it's your money either way. And so you want to you want to be really honest with yourself about that and think okay is this really gonna make it in the rotation? But yeah, I like that Billy Joel. Quote. I, I think I've heard that before. Yeah, some Berkeley yeah. delinquents, and they can be the ones you, you know you pull out and talk about at parties. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, watch this one. You know, but, uh, Banging his head against the wall, exactly. going to mount to nothing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, well, we keep him in the back. We pull him out at parties. He does tricks, but we don't. We don't take him. You know, he does tricks. We don't take him to the top floor of Sony. You know. Oh my gosh, that's funny. So number seven. Uh, number seven. Does this song need a full demo? Okay, so if it's yes or anything topic. else, yes, does it need a full demo? Or, you know, you want to do what's best for your song. You want to serve your song. What's going to give it? A demo is short for demonstration recording. What's going to best demonstrate, you know, this song and let someone get it? You know, some songs, if it's like a full rocking up tempo thing, yeah, you're probably going to need a full demo. Just to get the like, this is about production and groove and bang and all this stuff. I'm not going to be able to pull that off with just an acoustic or a piano. You know, they're not going to get it. But certain ballads and mid tempos might be best presented with like two guitars, a drum loop, and a great singer and a shaker or something. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, I was blessed to have crickets uh, that we've been talking about cut off a guitar vocal. Uh, you know, which is rare. You know, mm-hmm. uh, most. Everything else. So did, everybody, did everybody catch that? That's rare. Rare. Right. Um, especially from our situation coming in, it was just a song, you know, no relationships involved in that. It was just the song one. The song was the right mm-hmm. one, and we presented it. But, you know, one thing that is a downside of that I didn't talk about in those other couple episodes about crickets that I think we might have – you never know how it worked out, you know. But one thing that makes me wish we had done a full demo on it is when they cut the song, they cut it pretty much like our demo, which was a guitar vocal. It's a very sparse production. It's tasty. Mm-hmm. It's nice. But the minute I heard it, I knew it wasn't going to be a single. So maybe if you had done a little if more I, to you it. Know, if we'd have figured out a way to say, let's demo this like it could be a single. You know, maybe, See, you know they might have just passed on it. We might have killed what, it, what, what made it cool. That's a possibility. But... We might have presented it and served it up in a way they go, oh, that's a smash. Whereas we served it up in a way they went, that's a really cool song. I personally rather think it's a smash and give it a chance at radio. So I wonder sometimes, yeah, if we, you know, which, hey, we still got a win. We got a cut. They named an album after it. That's a win. I'll take it. But yeah. I wonder, it's like, man, if we served it right up to them and did the work for them to show how this song could be, you know, sound like radio. And still be cool and be what it is if we might have gotten that extra love on it. I don't know. See, I, I tell you what. I mean, the, what came into my head initially was uh, just some pushback I got from a blog that I wrote, which we're going to cover in some future episodes, which is the 10 biggest song demo mistakes. But uh, it was uh, uh, writers forget about like the business part of the songwriting when from the producing side – you don't know what their angle is, you know? So you, I think, unless you've got a song that's like The House That Built Me mm-hmm. or the song, which is somebody everybody knows, or the song you wrote with Neil Schuyler, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, Last, Last Kiss. First Kiss, yes. mm-hmm. that melody, that story, that could be all you need is a guitar vocal for that, mm-hmm. right? Because there's that's how you would cut it. I mean, right. it is and with a couple. Of, but if you're depending on the producer to hear your good song and take it to another level, okay? That's kind of a mistake in the sense that what if by the time they chose Crickets, they already had their two singles or three right. singles? Like, these are our singles. Yeah. And so unless 
they heard, you know, so, it, it, you know, you're thinking that the producer's coming in from, we need singles, and this song is a great song, this song could be a single, but maybe they're not thinking that. Right. Did you ever think about that perspective? Maybe they're thinking, we've already got our singles, this is a great song, we're going to name the record after it, because it just, it puts a bow around the whole project mm-hmm. and just fits perfectly in there, but... Like you said, if you had cut it and been creative the way you wanted to cut it and produced it a little bit, like because it's a better demonstration mm-hmm. of what was going on in y'all's heads when you wrote it, then could it have could it have been something that trumped mm-hmm. one of their singles? We'll never you know? know. You never <laughs> know. I mean, I'm not trying to twist the knife right. on the side there, but I'm saying like from a production side, like I've heard people that are like, I'm going to hand in this crappy you know, recording that's just so god awful. Mm. It's there's fuzz and pop and crap and I don't sing right, but it's a good song and you should hear the difference because you're a professional. Right. You know, yeah. that song, if it gets to the producer's ears, is gonna be sandwiched between some demos that sound great. Yeah, so like, it's gonna sound even worse. That's right. <laughs> you're hearing it amongst all your craftily demoed songs, and so maybe that's because it's a good song, right. it stands out, but when it gets into the <laughs> into the, the arena. Best. You know, think about it in terms of football, man. Like you, you can be a rock star in college football and some rock stars in college football who took their team to the championship and changed the the history of the school forever mm-hmm. fail. In pro football, because it's a, you're up here now. It's a different game. Yeah. It's a different yeah. game. So, so yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of people like the track guys are getting a lot of love these days. People that can, you know, cut their own demos in-house and kind of do it, you know, build it in their in yep. their bedroom studio. Uh, yeah. Build some things. So you, you have that competition, too, where it sounds – it has its own flavor. Um, but, yeah, so did you just want to think about it. Obviously, there's no – one size fits all answer. We can't tell you which it is, but we're telling you, ask the question. And so you come to a decision deliberately. And that's what we do with some of those that, we, you know, we talked earlier about uh, in last episode, is it a wide pitch? So sometimes these are narrow pitches. We go, you know, yeah, we can do the George Strait thing or this might be a Blake thing, but if he doesn't cut it, no one else will, or I don't know who else would. Well, maybe we won't put that in the demo session, but we'll go in and we'll do some guitar vocals where it's good, it's clean. We can take a shot with it. But mm-hmm. we're not going to invest as much in it, you know. We may, yeah, because that's going to be less expensive. It's less expensive because yeah. you're looking at budget. Because and just generally speaking, I mean, I'll tell you from a productive standpoint, like that. In order for that to work, that song's got to have one hell of a melody, mm-hmm. and that story's got to be so sick that, yeah. like, like House That Built Me, where you just get the whole thing, and it, like, it's so strong that way, mm-hmm. you could put anything around it, and. You know, like the the girl that looks so beautiful, she could wear a burlap sack, and she's still a supermodel. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah. And then there's some girls that really got to dial it. You know, what I mean, it's that kind of a thing. Like if it's so strong like that, you're gonna be able to get away with that more. But if it's kind of a groove thing, if it's a, and there's great hit songs that are a vibe feel. Mm-hmm. If the the strength in the song is the vibe and the groove, and the, well, then you better have the vibe and you better have the groove and exactly. make sure you're doing it right. So yeah, that I've heard people say before, they could do something with it. They can do. They can make something out of it. Mm-hmm. They don't have to. <laughs> That's right. They enough other that. songs come in that they are fully formed. And yeah. They don't have to do the work. You know. And, and there's an art to to getting that vibe. Because I mean, really, listen. In a song demo, uh, what are you selling? You're selling three things: the lyric, the melody, and the vibe. Mm-hmm. And if that vibe can come across in an acoustic vocal, God bless. Do it. Yeah. You know. But if you need more, and a lot of songs need more mm-hmm. to put that vibe across, then you're missing that component. You're only selling two things, the lyric and the melody. Mm-hmm. And if that lyric and the melody needs a vibe to make it relevant, then by golly, you're le- you're leaving the third wheel off right. on a tricycle. And it ain't going well. Not going well. <laughs> right. Exactly. So uh, number eight. Number eight, last one. So let me just recap real quick before we go on the eighth one. So uh, number one, is the song finished? Number two, is it a wide pitch? Three, is it commercially relevant? Four, who could sing this? Five, does a song have a fresh melody and lyric? Six, will I pitch it? Really? Seven, does a song need a full demo? And so number eight is, is it great? <laughs> you know? So we go from is it finished to is it great? And that's that's a big question. I've never had a, a so-so song get pitched to and cut by a major artist. Like every song that I've had cut is my best work. 
Mm-hmm. You know, none of my B level songs that I've pitched have gotten cut. They just haven't. It's super yep. competitive. You know, some of my A list songs haven't gotten cut, but out of the ones yet, that have gotten yet. cut on a major artist, it's all my A stuff. It's not my B stuff. And some of your A stuff ended up being singles. And some of your A stuff ended up being a free download if you bought the record. Exactly. And some of your A stuff ended up being a filler a track, uh-huh. so to speak. But also the title track. I mm-hmm. mean, so you 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 can't think of it um, in terms of your catalog. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't you can't. In other words, we judge right by comparison. Right. So and that's how we shop and that's how we sort of make judgments. So if you're judging this song is great because all these other songs are less than this song, mm-hmm. but you can't judge them in in relevant to your body of work. Mm-hmm. You have to judge them relevant to what you're hearing on the radio right now. Yeah. Is how does it compare to that? Is it great? Exactly. Yeah. And and it's it's tough. You know, uh, I heard a, a quote one time. I can't remember who said it, but they said a writer is most unfair to themselves when they're unable to be hard on themselves. You Ooh, know, so be, be fair to yourself, <laughs> you know, yeah. and and be honest. If it's if it's not great. Demo something. Wait till you got something great because. You know, it's just it's not going to it's not going to make it. And I know what you're probably thinking right now is you're like, I could turn on the radio right now and I'm going to hear a bunch of stuff that's not great. But odds are those people are in a different situation. And there's something about that song that got it through, you know, past the finish line. And if you're, you know, odds are if you're listening to this podcast, you have to get there on the strength of your song. And hopefully you're building relationships. That's the killer right there. That's the killer right there. Yeah. You don't have 10 number one hits and a big brand name so mm-hmm. that they're like, which adds, which increases the value of your B song. It does. does. It not? Because, you know, people listen with an expectation that, oh, it's a new Craig Wiseman song. He's written so many incredible songs. I expect this is going to be really, really good. Yeah. And so I'm listening, expecting to hear the good. If it's Joe Schmo so, shows up on a CD, it's just natural that at best you get a neutral you know, position like, OK, let's just see what this is. But they're yeah. definitely not listening on. Oh, this is going to be I bet it's going to be some I can't wait to hear this. You know, they're going to listen to Craig's first because there's yeah. a track record. Like, I want to. Oh, he's got a new song. I and they're going to give his B song, which which may very well be B. Not as good as yours. Right. Yeah. But if, if 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 yours is B, you know, if it's got yours, has got to be A. Yours has got to be you got to bring that because that's what's going to get you in the door. Yeah, and that's what you can. That's what, once you get in that door. Things change. So. Yeah, they do. So is it great? And just, just be honest, like, you know, all the songs I've had cut, they're, they're, each of them are different. I mean, there's fast songs, there's slow songs, sad songs, funny songs. But each of them has something about it that, mm-hmm. the, you know, kind of ticked off the, the points on this list that the artist wanted to say and they wanted their audience to hear. And, you know, if you're not super fired up about it, just save the money, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, 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 and write another song. And there you go. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, this episode here in the second part of eight things that you need to or I'm sorry, eight questions you need to ask before you cut that demo. And uh, Brent, you've got uh, you're not done yet. You've got a ninth little present, don't you? Yes. A little value bomb. A little value bombs away. So, yes, I have a, a gift. Uh, actually, it's at gift from Brent dot com. B-R-E-N-T. And it's a it's a free ebook. It's called Think Like a Pro Songwriter. And it goes through some of the mindsets that I have and that uh, other pro songwriters that I know have about dealing with the business. Uh, because you know, my goal at Songwriting Pro is to help you think, write, and do business like a pro songwriter. And so there are several kind of articles and lists and that sort of thing. It covers you know, how to connect to a publisher, how pro songwriters know um, who's looking for songs, six ways to make your songs more commercial, uh, and several other things that are valuable and will help you start thinking like a songwriting pro. So you can get that free download at songwritingpro.com. Or uh, actually, at, sorry, giftfrombrent.com. You can get a bunch yeah, of other free stuff at songwritingpro.com. Now you've got multiple value bombs. Oh, too many. <laughs> right. Start with giftfrombrent.com, and I've read the book. It's killer, and, and believe me, you're going to get you're going to learn something from it. So you got nothing to lose there. And uh, hey, that brings us to another, uh, the end of another episode of the climb. Let's keep on climbing, and we'll see you at the top. Adios, God bless.